this video we continue the previous uh, video that uh, explain about chapter one uh, introduction to electronic communication so in this video we will learn about modulation and also demodulation so last video i explained to you about uh, some terms such as uh, modulating signal uh, modulated signal uh, modulation and also demodulation so in this video we will learn what are those and how you can uh, understand to use that term in when we want to explain about modulation and demodulation process um, if you can see here all right um, the modulation is actually the process of mixing uh, the information signal with the carrier Okay, so the, the key words here is mixing and uh, demodulation is the process of separating or extracting uh, the information signal from the carrier. So the key word over here is the separating. All right. So in the modulation and the demodulation, we need two things in, in order to, uh, in order the process can be done. All right. First is information signal and also the carrier. So... If you read the upper side of this slide, all right, um, it is necessary for the information signal to be put on a suitable high frequency signal. This is what we call as carrier signal. Okay, so if it the information signal can uh, cannot be put on the carrier signal. The modulation process cannot be happened, and the signal or the information signal cannot be delivered. Uh, anywhere all right so the that, that is why uh, the modulation need to be done in order for the information signal uh, to be delivered to other places all right the information signal here it can be messages it can be audio it can be video it can be um, anything data okay but it must have something uh, to be put on uh, so that it can be uh, able to to, to transmit it okay uh, this will be the communication system block diagram we have uh, seen this in the previous video so but uh, this block diagram uh, much more detail all right whereby we have the transmitter and receiver over here and what is actually uh, we has inside that so for a transmitter we need uh, information signal as well as the carrier signal so the carrier signal will be uh, produced by what we call as oscillator this you will learn about it in chapter 3 all right and the, these two signal will be uh, put as an input into a modulator so this modulator basically you will we learn about it uh, in chapter 4 the output of this uh, modulator is what we call as modulated wave. Alright, so this modulated wave will be transmitted from a transmitter, alright, via maybe antenna, kat sini, over here. Okay, and then uh, using a transmission medium, this, the modulated wave will be transmitted to a receiver and it will be received as modulated wave and then the signal will be uh, separate from uh, carrier to be more sorry information signal over here information signal using a de demodulator this one will make the modulation process this modulator will do the modulation process. Okay, so why we need a modulation? All right, this will be a quite something that you need to read. All right, but uh, you need to understand why. Okay, I don't want to emphasize. This is something that you need to read by yourself, uh, and why we need to have a modulation uh, when we want to transmit certain uh, information signal okay 
right the modulation and demodulation process basically is actually depends or uh, based on what we call as modulation system and this modulation system actually uses this mathematical expression right this one is for the carrier and it has this um I will call it properties what we call as properties that uh, will help the modulation process to be done first what we call as amplitude this one is the frequency and this one is the phase so be, based on these three properties uh, the modulation process uh, will be deferred either based on amplitude frequency or the phase Okay, and that will give us the name of type modulation that we want the signal to be processed. So, if we want the amplitude to be uh, changing throughout the modulation process, that will we call as amplitude modulation. And when we want the frequency to be changed throughout the process, we call it as FM frequency modulation and for the phase modulation we want the phase of the carrier signal to be changed throughout the process so based on the name you need to know what the property will be changed and what are not so for amplitude uh, the frequency and phase will be not changing for frequency the amplitude and phase will be not changing and uh, for phase, the amplitude and frequency will be remain the same. Okay. And this will be the example of uh, the sine wave uh, in terms of amplitude modulation. When we have this, what we call as information signal, this would be the carrier. And when we modulate these two signal, mod, it will produce what we call as modulated waveform. This waveform has a name uh, where in most textbook it we call as envelope. And this we will learn more, uh, we will learn in detail in chapter 4. This will be the frequency modulation. Uh, this will be the information signal. This is the carrier where it has higher frequency than this one. Alright, this is low frequency, this is high frequency. And when these two uh, signal uh, modulate, uh, sorry, a, a mix or modulate, it will produce what we call as FM signal. So this is the modulated signal. Okay, so this will be the, the, the differences between type of modulation that we want the system to be used uh, in order to modulate the carrier and also the modulating signal. We can have uh, the same carrier and modulating signal but when we want to process the signal to be in certain type of modulation, the output will be different. Okay, so uh, you need to know uh, what type of output you want uh, from your transmitter to be transmit and what kind of receiver you need to design in order to receive the type of signal you you, you develop from the transmitter. Okay, next is about the electromagnetic spectrum. So when we have these ranges of frequency, basically the signal has we can has we can have a variation of frequencies. All right, and the the variation of frequency basically has been uh, categorized between uh, I mean and they has their own names of of uh, 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 the name or application of the frequency okay so from this slide uh, the frequency range uh, especially for the electromagnetic wave uh, roughly from 200 kilohertz until few gigahertz uh, that that this this range is for communication. Other than that, might be used for other applications such as maybe space, uh, aeronautical or whatsoever. Okay. And uh, the electronic frequency spectrum extends from subsonic frequency to cosmic ray. So cosmic ray, this is the range of cosmic ray. This is what we call as subsonic frequency, very low uh, frequency. 
Okay. And that range of frequency has their own designation or the name that we can uh, call when we know the certain range of frequency. So for, for this one, uh, this is actually the names that have been uh, set by what we call as ITU. ITU is uh, the, the, the body, the, the world, uh, that, sorry, international body that uh, try to help the other countries in terms of telecommunication applications as well as for development. So ITU is means International uh, Telecommunication Union. All right. And I think this one you can read from the notes. Uh, and this will be the 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 um, difference between the frequency in hertz as well as a wavelength. I think after this we will learn about what is wavelength and uh, the application that uses uh, the the frequency range. All right, like this one is power and telephone, the radios, microwave, infrared, uh, and inside the inside the the power telephone radio and microwave. This is actually the range of communication and what what kind of devices that uses between this. Okay, so I already put down uh, this. Uh, uh, call it the application of each uh, frequency range in detail you, you can try to, to see this uh, and actually for all the frequency spectrum all right uh, every country must has a body or a organization that manages all the frequency spectrum uses in the space of that country for instance for us we have MCMC that manages the frequency spectrum uses in this country. Either you want to use it for broadcast, you want to use it for uh, aeroplanes or aeronautical. Um, that is why um, I think last year we had this news where UniKL want to fly their drone but did not have author uh, authorization from any uh, body like police or MCMC to use certain frequency spectrum in order for them to run the drones. So for, for us, we have uh, MCMC uh, in this slide. This is actually the example for uh, America, United States of America. They actually have Federal, Federal Communication Commission that assign certain uh, frequency spectrum to be used uh, for free space radio propagation. So <clears throat> I think uh, I will show you uh, the Malaysian spectrum, all right? Okay, so this is the spectrum allocation for Malaysia. If you see over here, there are a lot of applications that uses uh, frequency spectrum, especially for the free space, okay? Either uh, we can see one is for mobile phone, radio astronomy, broadcasting, uh, land mobile, Marathi mobile also as well, na radio navigation. So the the each uh, application has to be set what which range of frequency that you want to use. Okay, so like this one, industrial, scientific, and medical has <coughs> said that they want to use in between six point seven six five megahertz to seven megahertz. Okay, so. <coughs> we need to register we cannot simply use uh, the frequency of certain uh, country uh, without having approval from the authority okay so i think that's it for this video we will see on the next video thank you